Okay, um, welcome everyone. Um, we are here to unleash our creativity. Um, as today's literary lunch, we're here with Grant Faulkner, who is the executive director of Nano, but not only that, he is an author and an all around cool guy. Um, we met and started talking when we did a webinar together and two people said that it was like two old guys on a bench talking about writing. And we decided that should maybe be our podcast some way, someday, way down the road when we figure out how to do that. Um, but anyway, it was so it was all, so ageist, Troy. So ageist. It was. It was. But, but affectionately, it, it really was ageist, affectionately ageist. So we took so, it as a compliment. Yeah, <laughs> somehow we leaned into it. We leaned into it somehow. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what, what that was. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so. Um, so anyway, everybody, this is Grant. I'm going to let him introduce himself a little further, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, this talk is one that's just fantastic, and I promise that you will leave here with ideas. One way or another, you will leave here with at least an idea, probably more ideas uh, than one. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Grant, and take it away. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> with an introduction of myself? Uh, this, yeah, go ahead and introduce this is what yourself. I, I, I hate I hate introducing myself only second to talking about what novel I'm writing. I was I was thinking like generally if you're at a cocktail party and you're a writer and somebody says what what, what what's your novel about I I've, I've almost never heard an author um, gracefully answer that question you know or I I'm yeah, so, I'm I'm personally very awkward with it put it that way. Well, in in that particular vein, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us about the novel you're working on. I, oh boy, yeah, just to make it more awkward. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm Grant Fal <laughs> I am Grant Faulkner, and I'm. Uh, I think for the purposes of today's webcast, the primary my primary function in life that applies to this is I'm executive director of National Novel Writing Month, which if you don't know about it, it's happening this November, and the shorthand is is that it's. Um, you, 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 it's a simple challenge. You write 50,000 words in 30 days. Uh, it's one part writing boot camp. And the boot camp part is you got to show up every day and write about 1,700 words. Uh, but it's one part rollicking writing, writing party. And that's because we have this uh, vast and vibrant community of people who take part. Um, so beyond that, though, I'm, I'm, I'm the founder and editor of 100 Word Story. Uh, I started that way back in 2011. And so I write a lot of flash fiction. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have a book coming out, The Art of Brevity, uh, coming out next February with the University of New Mexico Press. And then I've written a number of books on writing, um, notably uh, Pep Talks for Writers, and uh, which includes like 52 essays. It's designed so that people can write year round. So one essay per week, if you need like a little um, whatever charge every week. And then if you have it, teens in your life, um, Brave the Page is a NaNoWriMo book that I co-authored as well. And then I've got a couple couple collections of fiction. Um, uh, All the Comfort Sin Can Provide uh, just came out a year ago, exactly a year ago. Yeah. So, yeah. And I was at the in Boise just last March for Story For It, which I'm a big fan of, and I'm going to return uh, next March. So, yeah, I love Boise, and I hope hopefully we'll see you all there in person. Well, in quick commercial, uh, all the comfort, all the comfort sin can provide is awesome. You need to get it and read it. Ah, uh, thanks, Troy. Appreciate that. And I don't know what my novel is going to be about. I'm really struggling for my. You know, the thing about doing Anorama every year, it's sort of a benefit and it's sort of a hazard. But I have a lot of unfinished novels uh, on my laptop, and uh, so I'm deciding whether I should go back and finish one of those or I have an inkling of a new idea that I'm getting a little bit excited about. So I'm just trying to, you know, part of doing NRMO, I guess, it's kind of assessing your mood. Like, what are you up for? Um, and so I, I, I want NaNoWriMo to meet writers where they are in their writing life. So if you happen to be revising a past novel, then, then use NaNoWriMo's goal and deadline approach to do it. Um, or if you want to write personal essays instead of a novel, please do that. Um, but we just, just like, yeah, I think that I'll just say uh, the goal deadline approach of NaNoWriMo is good for any writing project. And our founder, Chris Beatty, he always said a goal and a deadline is like a creative midwife. And I think that's a very poetic way to think about it. It really works like that. It makes, helps you show up every day. It helps you be accountable and just, you know, like it's not, it's about not waiting for inspiration to strike, but to create inspiration when you sit down to write.
awesome. That is fabulous. All right. Well, with that, go ahead. You are welcome to go ahead and get jump right in and get started. Oh, and, I, don't, I thought um, this was a Q&A. Oh, no, I thought you were going to do your Unleash Your Creativity one. Do you want to do an interview type thing instead? Yeah, I thought you I was, were doing I, your... I'm, oh. I'm totally sorry. I, I thought this was a Q&A. Um, either I missed that. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, no, it's okay. All right. No. Um, okay. So we'll, <laughs> we can do this as a Q and a, we can do this as an interview. Um, because this is, uh, so yeah, actually we'll just, we'll just switch gears a little bit. That is fine. Um, so it feels good for him to get out and visit with dad as well. So. And, and I'm also happy the Q and A can be a group Q and A. I love talking. Sometimes I think that that's the best way to do these is to hear about people's own writing um, aspirations or challenges. And uh, usually everybody in the room shares those aspirations and challenges. All right. Oh, cool. We will. Here's what we'll do is we'll go ahead and. Um, uh, oops. I got one more person coming in. Hang on just a second. Okay. Um, what we'll do is I, I'll go ahead and ask you some questions. Cause that's fine. Um, sure. So how did you first get involved with Nano? Like how, how did you find your way into Nano and get to where you are now? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and one not covered in my presentation. So that's the value of, of, of not having the plan happen as, as designed, uh, which is kind of what NaNoWriMo is about also, is like, don't get overwhelmed or stifled by your plan, be open to creative exploration. And that's how I started NaNoWriMo actually, is that I was, I don't know, I guess I must've been in my late thirties or early forties. Anyway, I had a very kind of hardened um, writing process and it was very slow and ponderous and kind of precious. I would say that I would get like, a, I would write the first chapter of a novel and then I would endlessly revise that first chapter to try to get it perfect before I moved on to the next chapter. And, and what this did is two things. One, uh, Joyce Carol Oates says that you don't know the first line of your novel until you've written the last line. And so I tried NaNoWriMo to, to experience that, like focusing on just progress and getting to, and, and, and viewing the rough draft as an exploratory draft, as a discovery draft. And then once I got to that last line, I would know what that first line is. And the second thing, actually three things. The second thing is, is that when you revise your novel, there's a really good chance that that first chapter is going to be cut <laughs> or that it's going to be dramatically modified. So there's no reason to make it perfect in the first draft. Like emphasis on those words, exploratory draft, discovery draft. Um, and then the third thing relates to that Karen Russell, uh, who's written pep talks for NaNoWriMo. And just so people who, if people aren't familiar with NaNoWriMo, we have a lot of, you know, really wonderful authors every year write pep talks. And she said that 90% of her rough draft is cut by the time she reaches her, her, you know, final draft. And that's not to say all those words were necessary, right? They're necessary to move on um, in the revision process. Um, so it's not a wasted, wasted time of writing, but most of those words in your rough draft are going to be changed or cut. And so that's, that's kind of the NaNoWriMo premise is don't get hung up on perfectionism, um, focus on progress and getting to the end, and then you can revise. And so, you know, when I did that and, and wrote a novel, 50,000 words in a month for the first time, uh, I, I just found that there were a lot of amazing creative benefits to that. Um, and it really shook up my process. And I, and that's one of the, prem my premises as a writer, but also of NaNoWriMo is um, don't let your, your creative processes uh, harden and stiffen, you know, be playful with them, invite curiosity into them, just try new things for the sake of trying them. You know, some people like to write a 20 page single spaced outline of their novel. Other people like to write it by the seat of their pants, you know, try both, you know, end up somewhere in the middle, maybe. Um, and then, yeah, so the, the personal thing that that was my personal entry point as a writer, but I, uh, Chris Beatty, the founder of NaNoWriMo was an acquaintance of mine. And, and this is a very powerful, uh, job tip, job career tip. I'm going to, I'm going to provide right now is that one day I was totally exasperated at my job and I wanted to move on. I was really bored. And I just emailed Chris who I barely knew. And I said, do you know of any nonprofits in, in the Bay area, arts nonprofits who need a board member? And he said, no, I don't know of any, but let's talk about you joining the NaNoWriMo board. And so we talked about it. I, I had no idea that he'd invite me on the board. Um, he did. And then when he invited me on the board, he said, by the way, I'm stepping down. And he urged me to apply for the job and he kind of convinced me to. So 
there you have it. So if you're if you're having a bad day at work, <laughs> think about who who you can send a hail mary email to. That works for novel writing too, actually. Um, yeah, I, actually, it does work really really well. Um, and I know that like I've had successful nano novels that obviously. You know, they went through a revision process. Jim has had ex successful nano novels, um, but what are Jim asks? What are a couple pieces of advice for nano prep? What's the most important must-do thing for getting ready? I'm in. The, so, gosh, I wish I could take a poll right now. So, I have a very you know. Usually, people think of you know outlining, or you know character exploration, or world building. All those things very important. I think the single best, most important thing is actually um, coming up with a, a writing strategy. I think most people drop out of NaNoWriMo because they sign up and they, and they don't quite think. They're like, I want to I do NaNoWriMo, I want to write a novel. And they don't quite think that they have to really scrutinize how they use their time in their life and they have to open it up so they can find, literally find a couple of hours every day. That's how long it takes me to write about 1500 words. Um, and so I think that's one thing is kind of figure out what your pace of writing is, how much you can write in a day and then strategize. How are you going to find that two hours? You know, if you don't already write for two or three hours a day, then maybe you're going to have to write during your lunch break. Maybe you're going to have to, you know, give up social media. Maybe you're going to have to wake up earlier or, or, or stay up later. Maybe you're going to have to do power writing on the weekends and write 10,000 words on a Saturday, you know, just like coming up with that strategy. And, and what I actually do is I, you know, I wake up early by, by nature and that's usually my writing time from like five to six or 6.30. Um, but I look for like what's called time confetti, little tiny pockets of time. So that's the five or 10 minutes um, that you might, you know, aimlessly scroll through Instagram. You know, instead of doing that, like think about writing a um, hundred words of your novel. You know, it's amazing what you can do in a short amount of time. And, you know, in NaNoWriMo, one, one of the things, one of, I think our, our most you know, common uh, activity. If you go to one of the write-ins that are held um, really around the world, we have a thousand volunteers around the world who, who host these writing gatherings and they lead writing sprints, you know? And a lot of these sprints is like, I'll give you a prompt and you write as much as you can in five minutes. And I've, I've done this um, thousands of times and literally, and I've never had a person not be able to write. And this is why I don't believe in writer's block. And it's also amazing to me because some people might write 50 words, but some people might write 500. So this is all to say, trust in that power of, of being able to, to really use like small pockets of time and how they add up. Like a novel is really built pebble by pebble. That is fabulous advice. Um, so let me ask you this. How do you decide if an idea is, let's call it nano worthy, that it's big enough but it, but it's a big enough idea that you can actually write a novel about it. How do you decide if it's, if it's the right idea, if we want to put it that way? Yeah, I think the first thing is really not to think of it. Is it, is it the right idea? Um, I actually just wrote a piece about this um, in my uh, weekly Substack newsletter, which is uh, Intimations, a writer's discourse. And because a lot of people, I think, in the choosing of the topic of their novel, they get so hung up on what's the right idea or what's the most commercial idea, what's the most marketable idea, um, that they kind of lose sight of what they want to write, you know, what's in their heart, what's going to be fun for them. And so I think anything that's speaking to you, like I think your novels kind of call to you. So when I was saying earlier that I was having a tough time like deciding on what I wanted to write this year, this happens to me every year, by the way, because I do try to listen to the novel and, and what's really speaking to me, because it's not the bigness of the idea so much, just about my own enthusiasm and interest for it. So if it's the, the right idea means that, yeah, that I would have interest and energy for it for 30 days. And, and then it just depends, like, do I want this to be a novel that's just about the joy of writing for 30 days? And that's fine. A lot of people do that. Or do I want this novel to go beyond 30 days? And so those are two kind of slightly different equations, you know, that I kind of um, just try to figure out. But I think in the end, you know, I think sometimes people try to do almost like a logical proof, like they try to, you know, prove what's the right novel to write. And I think the better way is to really listen to your heart and your intuition, and that will guide you. So my, my blog, sorry, since I mentioned that the newsletter, I thought that people should 
people who are feeling intimidated by choosing an idea for November, they should just think of their novel as uh, a new friendship and somebody they might hang out with for a month or two. And I think like when we make new friends, we never know if it's going to be like just a kind of this burst of passionate friendship that lasts a month or two or a year, or if it's going to be a lifelong friend, or if it's just going to be like a, you know, a couple of weekend, weekends fishing kind of friend. So I, and I think a novel really is a type of friend. So I think that that's how you should think about November is who do you, do you want to spend a month with this novel? You know, well, you have fun. I, yeah. And that's actually exactly what I meant by the right idea. Yeah. I like, know you did. You know, <laughs> I, 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 and I love that. I actually love that answer um, because I, one of the things I love to do use nano for is play. Just let your muse play. Yeah. Um, so um, talk to us about what if you get stuck in the middle of nano and you feel like you're stuck, what are some strategies to get unstuck and finish? Yeah, and I'm, I'm just going to backtrack a little bit because you said about how you like NaNoWriMo to be about play. And I think that's exact. That's like one of the best ways to approach it. And but play can also lead someplace uh, that's very whatever serious and tangible and fruitful and prosperous and profitable. Um, uh, uh, our Matali Perkins, she's on our writers board and, and, you know, writers, especially when you've written so many books and you're doing it uh, as a profession, especially you can get very burned out and, and, and writing books can feel more like a business than an act of creativity sometimes. And so she, the first time she did NaNoWriMo, she did just want to find a way to return to a sense of playfulness. And so she just started a novel, like I said earlier, just for the joy of writing for 30 days. She didn't want to have any end goal for it. And that novel ended up being nominated for a National Book Award, you know? So you just, you just never really know. So anyway, I think like, don't, don't, I think too, too often in our culture, we diminish the power of the concept of play, you know, and that we should always be in touch with that. And NaNoWriMo helps us keep in touch with that. And that's important also when you hit the muddy middle of every novel. I don't know that, I've, I, I don't, is there a novel that doesn't have the muddy middle? I've never encountered it. I mean, there, maybe there is some writer out there that's so amazing, they never hit that wall. Um, but like you said, most people hit it somewhere in the middle. And that's usually the most dramatic point. And that happens in NaNoWriMo a lot because you, you, you can start the month very excited about your idea and with a lot of energy and just kind of like really get a, be a rabbit out of the gate, you know? And then you can hit like a big obstacle, you know, that after that first week of NaNoWriMo. And, and that's when you just like wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got to write 1700 words a day. And you might not be able to do it. And so you, you miss one day, two days, three days, and you're behind on the word, your word count. And that seems like you're never going to catch up. So you just quit. You know, and this is like the exact scenario that we're very frustrated with at NaNoWriMo. We want people to keep writing, you know, like, and, and it's, and, and one thing is, is that sometimes those people who do keep writing, they get new momentum, you know, and they catch up. And that's the way writing is. Like it goes, it ebbs and flows. You're going to go up and down in terms of your enthusiasm for your story and your ability to write it. And also, you know, writers are creatures of doubt. You know, and so like once we hit that muddy middle, you know, we start doubting our whole existence <laughs> sometimes, our whole self-worth as a writer, as a human being, you know, and, you know, we face some dark times often. And so I think it's like, you know, I think the more you write, the more you kind of recognize um, that kind of negative mindset. And I think like developing strategies to deal with it. I mean, I think sometimes stepping away is the best thing you can do you know, step away in order to step back into it with fresh ideas. Um, I oftentimes say that people, you know, like, like could be stepping away that day, like going for a walk. It could be stepping away for a day or two or, you know, longer if you're not doing it during November. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I, I also mentioned, you know, like I think like doing things in new environments can be really uh, creatively invigorating. So I think people who like uh, usually this is what I do. I get away from the computer and write longhand um, or I go somewhere else and write not in my normal writing habitat. And uh, I think so. So the general principle would just be to shake things up, uh, to be playful, uh, to go to a writing gathering with friends. That's why we have the NaNoWriMo community. Uh, to do a word sprint, um, to hear about other people's challenges and breakthroughs. You know, I think it's like this, like getting, when you're stuck like that, it's just like a cauldron of soup 
creative soup that you've got to just start cooking. I think that that is actually fabulous advice. I always tell people that muddle in the middle. I wish I could tell you that suddenly you've written 30 books and it goes away. Um, but it it's doesn't. Like sketching a I, I've never met anybody that it, go, that it goes away for. Never. Um, and I've talked to like lots and lots and lots of writers. And we all totally. experience the same thing. Totally. Um, it's like getting so a yeah. cold, right? We yeah. all, we're, we're all going to get a cold this year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pretty much guaranteed. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Especially if you go to a conference, you're going to come home with a cold yeah. uh, or something else. Uh, so Candace has a couple things. One of them, just, one of our Boise, one of our Boise Rymos used Nano November to write poetry. His goal was to write one poem a day instead of 50k words. That's actually a pretty good. That's pretty slick. I like. Was that. he was he arrested by the local Boise Nano police and put behind bars for transgressing yeah. the novel writing rules? Um, yeah. Something like that, yeah. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, like, I, like I said earlier, we, we want to celebrate. Uh, we want NaNoWriMo to serve every writer where they are. And I love that idea of writing a poem a day. I always encourage people to do that actually during National Poetry Month in April. Um, and that's mm -hmm. when we have our, our Camp NaNoWriMo event. Um, but yeah, anytime. I mean, writing a poem a day, that's a great goal. Yeah, we did, we did a, a poem sprint last year in like January with a bunch of us, December and January with a bunch of us completely unplanned and it was really really fun there was some fun poetry that came out of it um but she also says as an ml i struggle to write keep my rhymes motivated run things basically do all the things what advice do you have for an overstressed ml during nano oh wow candace <laughs> can candace come up on screen we can let's this make her come up on screen this is a treat to have a, a a real NaNoWriMo ML in the audience. And ML stands for Municipal Liaison. Hey, Candace. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Um, does everybody know what a NaNoWriMo Municipal Liaison is? Well, just in case, I mean, there are many things. I probably won't get to all of them on the list, but, you know, cheerleader, therapist, uh, event planner, uh, teacher, coach, uh, candy provider um and and that's all, all 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 the reasons that candace is probably stressed out is that they they do this i mean they're they're my true heroes because they do this all on top of their regular lives you know and we're a tiny 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 nonprofits, so we're not like compensating them for this they're doing this out of their own generous spirit and uh when i said that you know nanorimo was two parts you know one um writing boot camp and one rollicking writing party the municipal liaisons are responsible for, for for a big part of that party that happens. And I think that that's what distinguishes NaNoWriMo from so many different writing styles and organizations is that we demythologize this notion of the solitary writer. You know, I think one of our MLs, he said, let me think, um, he said, writing is best done alone with others. <laughs> and so I think there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, I mean, obviously we spend a lot of time alone with our words and our novels, but, um, I think like finding that balance and every writer is different between like engaging with people and getting motivation from them, like the writing sprints that I bet Candace hosts and has done and just being like with people, you know, like I used to write back pre pandemic, I would go to cafes and write a lot. And it, I, I wasn't talking to people, but I, they've done psychological studies on this. We, we're generally more creative when we're just with people, you know, just getting the vibe, the energy from people. And so sometimes I've gone to all sorts of, of write-ins hosted by municipal liaison. Some of them are, are quite raucous and people are asking like, what should I name this character? Or what should, what should happen at this stage in my novel? And others are like, you walk into a hushed library and everybody's just writing silently together. So it can really be a whole mix. Um, and I don't know if I answer your question at all, Candace. I think you were asking me, something bigger than that advice for a stressed out <laughs> advice for her for a stressed out municipal liaison but uh I, well i, I think I, yeah yeah i i you know, i i i mean i i think it's all personal really and I, I i do um i don't want you to be stressed out um and i i wish i could offer something that would help you not be stressed out um i don't know the particulars but um I, I know that when I, the reason, when I get stressed out in life, it's partly because I've, I've said yes to a lot of things. I'm really bad about saying no. Um, 
I'm also kind of bad about my own self care. And, and so I, I, I guess I just impart like, please, please take care of yourself. And, um, yeah, because I know you're taking care of a lot of writers, and that's the thing about municipal liaisons is that they do feel kind of responsible for all these writers and helping them get to 50,000 words. Do you feel like chatting about it more, Candace? I don't want to put you on the spot. She might be at work and have to stay muted. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry. Um, but Jim said, hey, that's maybe that's why I get so much written going to bars. Uh, during a lot of nanos. And so uh, my suggestion to you, Candace, is just to um, invite Jim and I to bars. I will be your DD <laughs> and um, be ensure that you get home. Um, and <laughs> if that's necessary. So <laughs> it may not be healthy and healthy answer, but it, it's, it's an answer. I don't know if it'll help too much, but you know. Well, I do think like, you know, like most, most of us are writers on top of our lives, you know, and so everybody has a different kind of life story or life business. And it's really hard to, to fit like, like every once in a while, my wife and I will pause and we'll be like, why is our house so falling apart and messy? Well, it's because we're writers, you know, and we, we, we prioritize writing over clean dishes and, and, and that creates stress. And so I think like the, one challenge for every writer is how do you find this balance in your life, this um, with your creativity um, and then the rest of your life that you kind of have to do. And then Candace is like layered on something extra because she's responsible as a volunteer too. Um, and I think that's a tough thing to figure out actually. It's a tough equation, but it's, it's something that every writer has to do. And I would say, you know, on our deathbeds, we're not gonna be saying, oh, I wish I would have kept the house neater. We're going to say, oh, I wish I would have written that novel. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. That is very true. I always like the Warren Miller quote, um, do it this year or you'll be one year older when you do. Yeah. Um, and that's just, it's, it's just kind of, and he's talking about skiing, which I also love. Um, but, you know, it, it's kind of just a fact of life. Um, and I, I will tell you guys, as a full-time writer, you still end up with a life like because you have so much else to do other than write that it's just like you have another job like you have a day job plus you, you're writing it's like it's um it's a journey and it's interesting um so don't think that like your full-time writer suddenly has it easy or whatever because we don't um and i know grant doesn't either i mean we do the same thing we work in different writer organizations to help our authors um it ends up exactly like Candace. You have a life, you have helping other authors, then you have to write yourself. Every, every writer wants one. Every, there's one commonality among all writers. They all want more time. Mm -hmm. Categorically. I've never, I've never met a writer who didn't want more time. Um, and like you said, Troy, I mean, part of the NaNoWriMo's premise is don't be a someday novelist, you know, write your novel today. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's its premise is that, you know, we're, I always quote Picasso who said, we're all born artists. But, you know, as we become adults, he said it much better than this. We, we tend not to be, um, we leave that behind. And I think like NaNoWriMo helps people, you know, creativity has fallen off of most people's to-do lists by the time they're adults. And NaNoWriMo helps put it as a number one or two thing for just one month of the year. And, and it maybe can't be number one for everybody year round, but just keep it on your to-do list. That's what I say. Just keep it present in your life because it's very important to be creative and to exercise that. That is so true. And I'm going to ask you a question. I know you've been asked this question before, but I'm going to ask it anyway because I know people always wonder about it. Why November of all the <laughs> months out of the year? <laughs> you know what? I was not involved in that decision. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know that I've ever received uh, a straight answer for it. Uh, Chris Beatty always says, um, well, the first Na NaNoWriMo in 1999 was in July. And then they switched to November after that. I think just because they couldn't do it in July, the people he was writing with. Uh, he, he wrote with 20 friends that first year. Um, and I've always heard him say, if you, can't, if you can't do it in November, you can't do it any time of the year. You know, like it's, it's like you can't, pick the perfect time to write or the perfect month like a lot of people say like why don't you do january you know everybody's making new year's resolutions it's got 31 days you know i mean you can pick any month but somebody will always have a problem with it 
that's the thing. Like, like with, with, with November, people like are like, oh, there's the holidays, there's Thanksgiving. But I don't know, show me a month that doesn't have something happening. Um, so I think that's part of the premise is like, don't again, wait for the perfect life situation because you're never, you're really never gonna get that. And to be a writer, you, you've got to figure out how to write in, in an imperfect situation. Well, that's probably one of the best answers I've heard actually <laughs> is, <laughs> is, yeah, just write in whatever situation you find yourself in. Um, so, so let's talk a little bit about your short fiction and your hundred word stories. Um, tell us a little bit about that site and maybe how people can come become involved with that. I mean, we're, you know, we're talking nano, but let's talk about other short fiction as well. Yeah, that's interesting because I started writing. Um, it was very happenstance. I was literally I'd been working on this novel for 10 years. I always call it my doomed novel. <laughs> and it, in fact, hasn't been published. And I kind of gave up on it after several drafts. Um, but I, not, not like I was working on it every day for 10 years, but I, it had been with me a long time. And I was on Facebook one night of all things, and um, a, a father of a fr of a, my best friend, um, he posted this link that he published um, nine 100 word stories in this magazine, 1111. And I checked them out, read them, and I loved them. And he, they were part of this collection of 100 100 word stories. So each story is exactly 100 words, not one word less, not one word more. And so I started trying my hand at them. And I wrote like stories that were like 150 words. And that was about as short as I thought I could get it. And so I told him, I was like, hey, I wrote these stories. They're really great. Um, 150 words. And he was like, no, 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 no. You got to get them down to 100 words. He's like, trust me, they're going to get better. And he was right. I kept practicing. It took a lot of practice to do, to tell a story in just 100 words. But they actually did get better. And that's because I learned a lot about how to leave things out of a story and how to, to hint at things and provide a mood and a kind of feeling for what's happening. Um, and also like writing, you have to, every word matters in a hundred word story. You just can't have any flabby sentences at all. And so it really helped me write more precisely and to pay attention to language more. And I always say, you know, like writing a novel is kind of like, um, like a Southwestern city. It can sprawl in all directions. You know, it can be as big as you want it to be. Uh, but writing a hundred word story, it's, it's a really small container. And so you just have to be very careful with every word and pay attention to it. And it's more, I would say it's more about editing than writing in a lot of ways. But, you know, and so, so I started writing them and they're very addictive. And, um, and I noticed there was no uh, journal for hundred word stories. So I started one with my friend. It's just called hundredwordstory.org. And so, yeah, you can submit, we, have, we do a monthly photo prompt that's quite popular. And then people, you know, just submit their stories like any literary journal and we publish them, you know, weekly. And let me think, I was gonna say, I think what's interesting about it is that it influenced my novel writing in ways that I didn't expect. And it's exactly what I mentioned about like not putting everything on the page, but learning to write through hints and learning to write through omission. And that helps like with things like creating suspense and it's really like when you write like that too, it's more of a collaboration with the reader. The reader is kind of filling in the details and they're more actively engaged, I think, if you do it well. So that's the short. The, the short version. Of the the short version word. could be longer. The that's, that's the worst <laughs> thing about writing short is that everybody's like, you know, like my book, my, my book, The Art of Brevity, I think it's about like 52,000 words. I'm, I'm sure somebody's gonna be like, you know, that's 10,000 words too many. You're too, you're too windy, you know? I actually wrote, <laughs> way back I wrote this, in, New York Times used to have this great blog called Drafts. And so writers would write about different writing topics. I loved it. Um, and I actually got to write a piece for them once. And it was on, it was like, I, it was called Going Long, Going Short. And so it was all about just what I told you, essentially my discovery of this short form. And and uh, I think the, the blog piece was like 1500 words long anyway somebody did a word count and that was the first comment that i read in the comment section is like wow this is a really long piece on writing short <laughs> <laughs> and that's really probably who i am as a writer I'm, i i can <laughs> locate a lot about craft about craft yes that is always a danger too we could talk about writing all writing craft all day long and about the business of writing all day long Mm -hmm. um, and then we got to write short stories. So, um, you know, <laughs> it's, it's great stuff. Um, 
Okay, so tell us about uh, like the nano camps that happen throughout the year too. Because, you know, when I mentioned November, some people go, I just can't do November, but there's camps throughout the year um, in different months. So tell us about those and how those kind of work and yeah. what what comes out of those. Yeah, I think one of the, the, I mean, very naturally, a lot of people think that National Novel Writing Month is just a month in November. And that's what it started out to be. And that is our big marquee event. And it always will be. But we do have year-round programming um, and we've developed our website so that at any point in the year, you can enter your uh, goal and deadline and create a project. I always say it's a little bit like Fitbit, Fitbit for writers. Um, and then we also have like other events during the year. So we're a year-round writing organization and year-round writing community. And so the camps are a big part of that. Uh, they're not in-person camps, although I'd love to do something in-person someday. Um, but we are a very tiny nonprofit. Um, so the, they're virtual camps. They're like NaNoWriMo. I was describing as a more casual version of NaNoWriMo. And that's because we don't have a whole like structure of support from, from municipal liaisons like Candace. Although a lot of municipal liaisons do do events throughout the year. Just depends on what region you're in. Um, but one part of camp, one part that makes it more casual is also that you can write whatever you want to. I know that you can do that during NaNoWriMo as well, but we kind of more officially push it in camp. So you can you can revise your novel, you can write a collection of short stories, you can write an epic poem. So it's just a little bit more, you know, loose. And I always, I always invite people, like I say, write a rough draft in November and then revise it in April and July. You know, I think that's a good pace. I just got an email from somebody who just wrote their their novel in uh, July, and, and he's going to revise it this NaNoWriMo. So, you know, whatever works for you, of course. Um, but yeah, same thing, goal, deadline approach, goal, deadline as a creative um, midwife. And then, you know, we do have a lot of community structures available as well. Well, that's a beautiful segue, because what I was going to ask you is, what about after NaNo? What do you do with that 50,000 words you created during NaNo? Um, yeah. What, what's your advice about that? You know, I think that that's the biggest um, question that when I first started at NaNoWriMo that I heard from people was um, uh, I've, I, I really enjoyed this experience of writing a rough draft of my novel. What do I do with it now? What's next? And so we came up with a program called I Wrote a Novel, Now What? And it happens in January and February. And we really focus on revision topics in January. And we'll do that in all sorts of ways through webcast series, through podcasts, through blog posts, through again, community discussions in our forums. Um, through organizing people, helping people organize into writing groups to get feedback. Um, and then in February, we, we kind of focus more on um, guidance and education around publishing. So we might have a webcast with an agent about how to write a query letter, or we've had people on from the hybrid publishing world or the self-publishing world to kind of talk about how to navigate that. So the, the, the interesting thing about this era of writers is that we just have so many different ways to reach readers, you know, and it's, it's actually very daunting and dizzying. Um, I always just feel like I'm behind and, and learning more. And I mean, I think everybody is really, it's, it's hard to feel like you know it all, um, which is wonderful. And so, yeah, we've, we've just got so many people who've written great stories and we want to help them get them out in the world. That is awesome because that's that's the way I always feel. It's like I'm all, I'm constantly learning. I think it's what's keeping me alive is that I always have something new to learn. Um, it is it never seems like I've mastered everything, and I I haven't met a writer that feels like they've mastered everything. You know, it's and again, we've talked all kind of, you know, yeah. If you ever talk to a writer who feels like they've mastered everything, please run away from them. They, I think they'd be a very dangerous personality type. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> there's, I mean, that's the beauty of it, right? You cannot master it. Um, I mean, everybody has a degree of level, different levels of mastery, but it's kind of like golf, right? Sometimes you're gonna, yeah, you might, you might shoot a 60 one day, but you might shoot an 80 the next day, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, not that, yeah. Anyway, got to make a sport, yeah. at least one sports metaphor every webcast. So that did it <laughs> exactly. I mean, you snuck that one right in there. Um, well, so. First of all, I'd love to talk about how I, I don't writers guild can be involved in some of those um, activities like in January and February and also other organizations as well. Um, but for the sake of people listening or either here or listening to the recording, what if somebody wants to get involved with Dano? What if they want to volunteer? What are the steps? How do they do it? And what things 
what things can they do? Yeah, well, I don't, I don't want to add to Candace's workload, but when you when you mentioned like the Writers Guild and helping out, you know, maybe when she mentioned that she was stressed out, you know, having other people help out with whether providing locations or providing like, I don't know, hosting, you know, a lot, a lot of people host. I, I know that one challenge of being a Miss Liaison is like finding great space to host events um, or to have other people even come and lead writing sprints or, you know what I mean? Like just lend a, a helping hand. Sometimes that can be a lot of extra work too. But I'm just like mentioning that if she's open to that, that might be one way to help out and get involved. Um, and I love it. That's one thing about NaNoWriMo is like when we can come together with other organizations to work together because we view everything, you know, this is a big writing community, a big writing ecosystem. And we've got this like ecosystem that's kind of global, but also local. And so that's that's the way I like to work. Um, and now I've totally forgotten your question since I went on that tangent. But um, it was how, how, the, how you all as an organization can can. Well, and how individuals, if, if somebody says, hey, I just want to get involved and help out, what are some yeah. ways that they can help out? Yeah, I mean, we do we do take our, our municipal license like Candace, that's people apply for that position. And so that is one way uh, we do have a come right in program uh, and that we, we come right in like our library, generally libraries also um, like bookstores or community spaces and they will host uh, NaNoWriMo writing events. Um, so very similar to our municipal liaison program, uh, but mainly focused on libraries. So spreading the word, um, like asking libraries, if you're your local library, if they'd like to be part of that program, it's all free. Everything we, we do is free because we want as many people in the world to write their story as possible. Um, we also have a young writers program, which is really amazing. I don't think we get enough press about it, but 100,000 kids and teens write novels with us every year. And we support 10,000 schools all for free, again, with resources to help teachers um, teach novel writing. And I would say when I was growing up, no one wrote novels. No, no kid would have ever even dreamed of writing a novel. You know, that was like, I don't know what that was like. Yeah, I, I wrote I wrote short stories and poems, and I was a very you know geeky reader kid. Um, and uh, I, but it's it's amazing. I'll talk to kids who are seventeen, and they'll have written five, six novels. Some of them will have self published. Some of them will have published. I I talked recently to this um, 21, 20, 20 year old college student. And she she'd actually broken down when she was 17. She thought she was a failure as a writer because she hadn't been able to publish her books. <laughs> and, and but then she got a two book deal with Harper Collins and when she was only 20, you know. Um, anyway, it's just all to say that that uh, NaNoWriMo is always pushing boundaries and helping people go beyond what they thought was possible. And that happens with kids, too. And it's not I, I don't mean to focus on publishing, though, because like, I'm just charmed by these kids who are a lot of very reluctant writers or readers in classrooms, uh, they discover themselves as writers, you know, they develop a passion for it. And I think like NaNoWriMo is really effective in the classroom because it's like most writing programs tell a student what to write and the student writes it only for their teacher. So you don't have a sense of audience and you don't have a sense of agency. And since like our Young Writers Program allows the students to choose what they want to write and to explore that topic and that we don't say there's any right or wrong and they can just jump into their imagination and writing can be fun and so i think like having something fun making something fun is the best way for people to engage and learn from there and we find that over and over again with students so yeah it's a really magical program so i think like um you know introducing it to schools you know because again it's free any teacher can do it um, and we've got a whole separate website with things like virtual classrooms and a writing platform and many, many other things for kids. That is absolutely fabulous. I knew there was a kids program. I didn't know how extensive it was. Um, and I'm, I'm constantly amazed by young people as well, because like I have mentored two people, two students who have reached out to me who did a novel as their senior project. And I'm like, I wish I would have had the ability to do a novel as my senior project. People at my school would have been like, no way. Um, but anyway, that, and that's another story for another day. Yeah. Um, but Candace also said she's had um, Rymo's help out by running write-ins, which is a big help. Um, she's got a new co-ML, which she's very excited about. Um, and I know that, like, if you want to run, if you want to run a write-in at your bookstore, your library, your school, wherever, um, I know that Candace is open to telling you to yes, go run that um, that <laughs> that uh, write-in. And um, we're talking about having some with Plotter. Um, the writing software plotter, which I happen to work for, we're going to have some um, 
virtual write-ins this year. And we've got a cool new program that we're using that has really cool networking ability, like tables that you could sit at, network, and talk, virtual tables, um, rather than breakout rooms like Zoom and stuff like that. It's really cool. So we're going to do some of those this year as well, uh, virtually. So if you can't get together with somebody in person, it, it's a, it's an option. Um, Very and cool. Candace also says we have a local remote that runs um, y, oh, YWP in his classroom. Well, oh, YWP cool. is our that young awesome. writers. That's our young, young writers, writers program. program. Yeah, young writers program. Okay, yeah. And I'm so glad that Candace uh, is getting help running some of the write-ins, and that uh, she has a co-ML. I hope that helps with the the stress part yeah. of volunteering. Yes, this job is way too hard for it not to be fun. That's what I tell people. This this <laughs> this whole writing gig and everything around it is way too hard for it not to be fun. At That's least good. sometimes. At least at least it. sometimes. Um. Okay, so um, so final thoughts that you have for us about about nano, about like nano this year, um, and anything else that you want to just kind of final thoughts for everybody. Well, I just noticed uh, Di um, uh, is applauding Candice as well, saying that she's amazing yeah. and has done so much volunteer work in the field. And so I really do. I mean, I think um, just going back to how I introduced NaNoWriMo um, as, as one part, writing boot camp, one part um, rollicking writing party. I, I do want to emphasize that that latter uh, part of the community and the party part that, that people like Candace um, and really make effective. And I, I just, um, I think there's too little of that in the world. And I think that this is like something that NaNoWriMo really serves in way that, ways that a lot of other organizations and a lot of other writing organizations don't is creating that community and bringing in people that 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 might not ordinarily be part, be part of a writing community to, to help them feel welcome and included. And I think that that's just so, so uh, vitally important. And especially in this era we're living in where a lot of people are divided and there's a lot of, uh, I don't know, um, yeah, just division in general. And, and NaNoWriMo, you know, my, my optimism comes from stories. You know, I think stories, they want to be free. They want to be out there. And stories connect people, you know, they connect unlikely people. And that's how we come together as human beings, you know, in so many ways is how we understand the world is how we connect with other people. It's how we develop empathy. I can go on and on. So that's what I'd leave you with. You know, I think sometimes uh, people uh, think NaNoWriMo is all about, you know, helping people become the next famous author. And we're very uh, blessed and thankful that people have gone through our programs and have published and, and it's been very successful, but I'm, I'm really, um, all the more proud of, of all the people who just show up to write with others in the community and celebrate that togetherness that comes to get comes about when you're writing together. Yes, I mean, I that is that is such a wonderful way to end things. And I, I, I love when I do nano, which I do it frequently, I did it last year, and I, I didn't intend to it was an accident. But um, <laughs> anyway, that's the best way. And the year before, you know, our founder Chris Beatty didn't really intend to either. It was kind of an accident. He always says he founded NaNoWriMo accidentally, and it's absolutely true. And I, I think sometimes doing things accidentally, that's that's when the best things actually happen. So yeah, I mean, I've done accidents. it on purpose. I've done it on purpose, but it, you know, it was basically the one of the co-owners of our local bookstores just messaged me and said, "Are you going to do Nano? I need a partner." And I'm like, "No, I'm not going to do Nano." And I'm like, "Oh, but I could." And you know, then it turned into an accidental, accidental. I call it an accidental novel. It was a lot of fun. Um, uh -huh. but, but anyway, so um, I, I love that. But I love everyone that just comes out and just writes stuff that's one nano over and over again. And they haven't, you know, they haven't necessarily even published anything, but they're having fun. Um, they're gathering as a community. Um, and we, I just want to say personally that I appreciate everything you do for writer writers and everything nano does for writers. Um, it is just one of the best organizations that I've been around that is just supportive of a broad, broad, broad community, um, locally and nationally. And I love the local aspect of things. So to you, thank you. And thank you for everything that you do uh, for us and for other writers. No, thanks to all of you. Because like I said, you're part of the vital part of that writing ecosystem. We're all connected. And it's, it's great that we're all working together. Um, and yeah, I just feel bad that I didn't, uh, I, I forgot that you wanted me to, to uh, do the, the whole presentation, uh, but I'll do it a story for it. You can, you can see it there. I'll do the, probably the same one, um, a little tweaked maybe, but um, yeah, but this was, I think mm -hmm. we probably got to other topics that maybe are more meaningful that weren't part of that presentation. So 
Well, there yes, we did. And, and um, I would love to have you back in January or February at some point and talk about nano now what, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of my, my favorite topics that time of year. Um, and we would love to have you be a part of that discussion with us so we can talk about that as well. Um, yeah. Because I think that'd be fantastic. It's an interesting so. thing. And Candace probably has some insight on this too. Um, most of the NaNoWriMo writers I talk to, they prefer drafting a novel over revising it. Um, I'm not sure how this is split in the general writing world. I actually prefer revising to writing. That's part of the reason I like NaNoWriMo is that I get through that rough draft and get it over with fast. And then I can just like kind of linger and slow down uh, with revision. So I don't know. But anyway, something to think about. That that is actually that it is really interesting. I love both parts of the process, and most people have one or the other that they prefer, and I like both. I'm kind of a weird. Well, hey, we won't. We don't have to go any further. Jim's just nodding his head, like, "Yeah, he's known me for way too long. He knows I'm a weird <laughs> guy like that." <laughs> oh, and I I did notice Jim nodding when he's like, "They like drafting rather than revising." I know that's the case with Jim because I've known him for a long time. So. Um, <laughs> but it's one of his his things. Loves to draft, hates to revise. Um, but anyway, well, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank thanks for this Q and A. I know it, it, this was a little different than what we had planned, but I really do feel like there was a lot of information here, and we got to a lot of things that you're right that we might not have otherwise. Um, so I hope you guys that showed up found it helpful. If you're watching the recording, um, I hope you find it helpful as well in helping you prep for Nano and complete Nano, um, because those are all great things to do. Yeah, and so, I'll, I'll, I'll just end with one more thing is that we do have a whole um, nano prep initiative that's happening that just kicked off this week and it's on our website. You can see it under writing resources. There's a nano prep section and we have a whole kind of nano prep curriculum of a type. Um, and so each week has a different theme. Like this week, it's like uh, developing your story idea. Uh, next week, it's like characterization. And so uh, you, you don't, if you miss the first week or two, don't worry about it. It's not like a regimented formal kind of program. It's meant to ha- help anyone get ready for NaNoWriMo. And so, yeah, please go to our website and join the community and uh, take advantage of our resources. And um, yeah, it was, you know, and, and also, you know, if somebody's watching this on October 31st, don't talk yourself out of writing a novel, talk yourself into it. You can pants it. It's not too late. We've had plenty of people, you know, uh, really literally get their idea at midnight on October 31st and, and go for it and be quite successful. Yeah. I've known some people who started Including on Candace. November. <laughs> I, I've known some people who started it late, like November 4th or so. Don't I, Jim? Yeah. I know some of those people. That's um, another approach. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not the one I recommend, but it is an approach. Um, but anyway, so that's fantastic. And now you can post your project already, right? You can post your project yep. for Nano, yeah, um, and name it. I think Candace posted about that. I was I was really excited about that because um, that seems that seems earlier than other years. Is that true, or am I or am I just imagining? No, we try to kick things off in September, usually about the same oh. time. Yeah, yeah, we start recruiting people, and uh, yeah. And then it's me that's chronically late. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. No, no. That, <laughs> that doesn't surprise be, me at all. Can't be late for NaNoWriMo. You cannot be late. <laughs> doors are that always open. Awesome. The doors are always open. <laughs> that is fantastic. All right, well, thank you very much again for joining us. Thank you for everybody that joined us, everybody that's watching the recording. Um, we appreciate it. And again, we hope this helped you uh, prepare for your nano project or just prepare to write a novel. Uh, yeah. Something like that. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Grant. We'll see you around soon. Thank you, Troy. Yeah. Happy novel writing. All right. Thanks, everyone.